Okay, as you can see from the title of the video, the exodus, the two wings of an ego, and the abomination of desolation. Now, we're on a series. We're calling it Weeks to Wings. And basically what we're getting at is we have a certain countdown to uh, certain years that would lead us to a commandment, okay? It would lead us to a decree in the book of Daniel chapter 9 of counting years and then counting weeks, now, hopefully you're familiar with these concepts because these are what we've been going over over uh, several videos. And this year we learned about Zedekiah as a type of Benjamin Netanyahu fulfilling certain years of that king. And that would lead us to prophecy related to Benjamin Netanyahu taking out his prime minister and leading us also to 9-11. Now, that would bring us to a countdown of uh, certain prophecies happening within the book of Jeremiah. So in the book of Jeremiah, we have this timetable of Zedekiah, and it's a countdown leading to the destruction of the temple. Okay, It's leading to a, a specific moment in time. And be patient as we go through this series. There's a lot of information through each video. And I'm not going to give it to you all at once. I'm just doing it in, in, in small pieces so that you can absorb the concept. But basically what we're getting at is we have different books and scrolls in the Bible. So we've explained to you how Daniel is praying the book of Exodus. Okay, He's praying the prophecies of Jeremiah. Okay, He's praying those prayers in Daniel chapter 9. Okay, And what he's doing is it, in his time... He's not even praying about the Messiah, but he's getting prophecy about the end of days, about Christ's second coming. And there is a series of weeks or a window of time of acceleration that we're currently in, okay, of many of the prophecies being fulfilled. So, in this, what we're going to do is look at what the prophecies in Daniel say. Now, let's call this our book of Exodus. Let's call this our book of Jeremiah. So in the Exodus, when we say Exodus in English, and you read, you see your book, it's called the book of Exodus. It's a Greek word. It's a Greek word. It's found in the New Testament in a number of occasions, referring to the Old Testament when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Okay, Exodus. Now, there's another version of the Old Testament in Greek called the Septuagint. In the Septuagint, when we get to Daniel chapter 9, um, they translated the word going forth of the commandment in Daniel chapter 9 um, and verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth, the exodus, Okay, so he's, they're interpreting that as the exodus, the going forth, the exodus of the commandment to restore or return and build Jerusalem. Okay, so the exodus is an exodus not out of Egypt, but out of Babylon. Okay, and that's, of course, what we had in the book of Revelation, where it says, come out of Babylon. This will be an exodus out of Babylon. Okay, that you receive not of her plagues. So, this timetable we're also given in Jeremiah. Where we have certain prophecies that relate to this window of time once we count to these weeks. Okay, so it's, it's being recognized here that this is an exodus. Okay, and so this exodus, this going forth of the people, Instead of coming out of Egypt, they're coming out of Babylon. And then we get to Daniel 9, and we get this schedule of prophecy within weeks. So what happened is we counted years from the establishment of Israel as a nation, and we counted those years leading us up to a, a, partic a particular time. Okay, 70 weeks are determined. We also found another seven weeks in Daniel 10, refer to previous messages, but Know and understand that from the exodus of the commandment to return and build Jerusalem unto Messiah, the prince or ruler shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built and the wall in troublous times. Now, again, if we take those words, the street 
and the wall. And we look at the Septuagint, Greek words, how they translated that from Hebrew or Aramaic into Greek. Those words are referring to New Jerusalem. So in New, New Jerusalem, there's the street. There's the wall around New Jerusalem. Major, major features of New Jerusalem. Ezekiel's temple also has these features. Okay, So it's a returning of the people. Now this is, this is what's happening. Okay, Whether uh, it's happening to you or not, this is what's happening. And then it goes on to talk about, And after three score weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for he himself. And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and the end war and desolations. Okay. So you have the destroying of the city and the sanctuary. Okay. There has to be a destruction of the sanctuary. The end is with a flood. Okay. We're in a time we're getting these rumors of a flood. Okay. And rumors of war. War and desolations. Now it's when we come to verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall call the sacrifice and oblation to cease for the overspreading of abominations to make it desolate, even unto the consummation of the determined shall be poured out. Now, there's a whole lot more going on here that you don't realize unless you go to the original language. Okay, so you can see a couple examples there. We went into a Greek translation, and that allows us to take those Greek words and see them in the New Testament, to see them in the book of Revelations that's written in Greek. But what's in here, okay, you can see in the title of the video, we talked about the exodus. That's also the return, okay, to return to New Jerusalem, okay, the return to the temple of Yahweh that's open in heaven throughout the book of Revelation. But then it talks about the overspreading. I know this is important. I want to demonstrate this. The overspreading there in the Hebrew is kanap, and kanap is a wing, okay? So it's overspreading, it's a wing. Now we're going to suggest to you that that in this prophecy is actually a schedule of the weeks. We'll, we'll go through the notes, we'll break it down to you easily. But I want to demonstrate something to you that you can understand in simple terms. There's a sign for us in Daniel chapter 7, okay? And the sign is there was a lion that had two wings of an eagle, okay? So that's the Antichrist. The Antichrist has a mouth of a lion. And you can see on the coin, there's a lion representing the seal of Medo Persia. And then you can see the eagle, the eagle's wings, okay, as the seal of the United States. Okay? Now, it says that there was a lion with two wings of an eagle. Okay, so that's a type and shadow of the Antichrist in Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. And that person, okay, then that lion that has a mouth of a lion, okay, the beast has a mouth of a lion in Revelation 13. Then it, Daniel says, I beheld until the wings of the eagle were plucked. Okay, so there you see the wings of eagle, wings of eagle plucked. Now, the first was like a lion. It had eagle's wings... And I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand on his feet. Now we can see later on that, verse 17, these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. That's the interpretation of these four. So these would be uh, beasts. Um, and these beasts would be actual kings. They would be actual people. Okay, so the first one is a lion. And I want you to notice here, it says, a lion shall eat straw like an ox. Now this parable in Isaiah 11 has to do with these beasts. Now this one is telling us about Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar was made to eat straw like an ox. Okay, so when it says the lion shall eat straw like an ox, that's telling us about Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, and then we see here... The, the Nebuchadnezzar was on four legs eating grass like an ox. But here you can see the lion is made to stand upon his feet like a man. That means he also was on four legs. And a man's heart was given to it. And again, Nebuchadnezzar, he was given the heart of an ox. Okay? And for seven years. So the um, person that is this king, which is Donald Trump, 
he's going to have his wings plucked. Um, in Revelation it says he's going to continue for a short space. And a man's heart was given unto him. So um, he's going to have an ex a humbling experience like Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, so this is a sign for us, okay? This is a sign for us. This is an indication. Why? Because when the wings of an eagle are plucked from the Antichrist, they are given to the woman in Revelation 12, okay? And to the woman was given two uh, wings of a great eagle. Well, where did they come from? Well, the wings of the eagle represent dominion, okay? And that dominion was taken from the line with two wings of an eagle. I beheld to the eagle, his wings were plucked, and then he stood up like a man, okay? Well, he stood up like a man because that's the Antichrist. He's given two wings, his wings are plucked, his dominion is taken from him, all right? Now, I want you to get this because what happened, we see in Daniel 7, Daniel 7 talked about the lion with two eagles' wings, and then it talks about this transition right here. Daniel uh, 7 and verse 26, it talks about the dominion taken, but the judgment shall set, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy unto the end. So that is the lion with the two eagles' wings being plucked. Okay? You see that? That's exactly what it said in verse 4. Then verse 27 says, um, in the in the eagle's wings, okay, remember what it took, the eagle's wings were plucked, in the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So when those eagle's wings are plucked, Okay, that dominion and authority that the beast took in the Garden of Eden, he, Adam was given dominion, okay? And then the serpent came and, you, and usurped that, okay? That dominion, okay, is expressed through the Antichrist. But then his eagle's wings are plucked and they're given to the woman. The woman represents the saints of the Most High in verse 27 and under the kingdom and dominion and greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the saints the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom that's the eagle's wings guys all right that happened all right that happened in the sequence of weeks so now let's look at our notes and let's go over the detail of what is happening here leading us to as you can see from the title of the video we have the Exodus, we have the eagle's wings, we just explained, leading to the abomination that makes desolate. Okay, here's our notes. As you can see, Exodus, the eagle's wings, abomination that makes desolate. Now, let's remember that we had 70 weeks are determined. Okay, from what? From the peace deal. Now, guys... The reason we go over the prophecy, we go over the scriptures over and over, is that the people argue and troll, no, it's not, it's not the end of days. Well, that's why we call them apostate Christians, because if they knew the prophecy, they would be extremely excited. And the end of the book of Revelation says, the spirit and the bride say, come, even so, come. So the people don't want him to come because they know they're facing judgment. They know they're evil and wicked way and their sins about to be judged okay but to the saints the true saints it's extremely exciting as we have explained with the eagle's wings and the whole transition of power from the beast to the saints when the lion with two wings of an eagle i beheld to the eagle's wings were plucked okay so what happened is we saw that Daniel chapter 9, 24 gives us 70 weeks are determined. We found in Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 and 3, three and a half weeks mentioned twice, in ver once in verse 2, once in verse 3, giving us another seven weeks. So it's a total of s counting of 77 weeks from the peace deal. Okay, This is what we've been talking about. We've been explaining that at 
great length and great detail. Now, when we count those weeks from the peace deal, no one understand that from the decree, logos in the Septuagint, and the going forth, this word is exodus. Okay, that's why we're titling this exodus from the going forth and the exodus. So in the exodus, Moses confirmed the covenant, did the reciting of the book of Deuteronomy on the first day of the 11th month. That's our time period of the peace deal. And then from that peace deal covenant, we then count these weeks, okay? So we add uh, 62 weeks, and then we come to Passover. Now you can see it says 63, and the reason for that is we have a leap week that was um, in the calendar, okay? So we had add an additional week to get to Passover, and then Passover we add another seven weeks, and then we come to the Feast of Weeks, okay? So those are uh, the weeks in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Okay, so understand, we, none, no one understand from the going forth of the Exodus, okay, decree, we start from there. We accounted the years and we got there. And then what do we come to? We come to Messiah, the ruler, okay, shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks, okay? So it's on, it, he's coming, he's coming soon. Now, he's, he's coming in uh, revealings. Apocalypse means revealing, okay? So it's the revealing of Christ. And it's also those, okay, that are looking for his coming. So then it says they will return, okay, and build the street and the wall. Like we said, this is New Jerusalem. They will return. Why? Because their names are written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the earth. Okay, so they come from New Jerusalem. Our whole existence on the earth is a uh, captivity into Babylon. So we return out of Babylon and we return to build the streets and the wall of New Jerusalem. And this you can see in Revelation 12, verse 6 and 14, when the woman had a place prepared of God. Okay, so woman had a place prepared of God mentioned twice. That place prayer to God is the temple, okay? The tabernacle of the testimony. And then it says, the end shall be with a flood, okay? And this is what's extraordinary is right now, there's so many rumors of a flood, what's going to happen with La Palma, okay? Well, we'll see. We showed you before how that could potentially be the millstone that's cast into the sea, okay, that... Uh, the Sarai cast the millstone in the sea in Jeremiah 51. It could be in this year, okay? But you can also see it says the end shall be with the flood. So it could mean the end. And what happens is the city is destroyed. So you can't destroy Jerusalem, modern Jerusalem, with a flood. It's in the mountains, you know? If a tsunami hits, you know, uh, Tel Aviv, yeah, that could be the flood. But it's not Jerusalem. So this city is Babylon. It's going to be a great flood on the United States, uh, as we've taught many times. So we can also see this uh, similar description of what's going on here in Daniel in Revelation 12 with the woman. So the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a flood. Okay, so you can see the flood in Daniel, the end shall be with the flood, and the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a flood. Now, and then it says, unto the end of war and desolations de to be determined. Again, once a, we're getting more and more rumors of war, what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, okay? It, but it says, unto the end. So, we're not, not counting these, the flood or the war, in our counting of weeks, guys. It's not certain. We can't make that clear. But what we can make clear is Revelation 12 is talking about the flood, the serpent cast out of his mouth the flood, and the dragon made war with the others of the woman's seed. See that? So clearly what this is talking about in Daniel 9, verse 26, is Revelation 12. All right? So uh, this is what we're watching, and we'll see what happens. Okay? But now, at this point, 
we begin to arrive at the counting of our weeks. So remember how we saw seven weeks, 62 weeks are determined. Okay, we had a return take place here. All right, we have returned and to build the street and the wall of Jerusalem. Okay, now our next week, all right, is a, is a type of the confirming of the covenant on Mount Sinai. When y'all came down on Mount Sinai, his glory rested on the mountain seven days. Okay, so that's the confirming of the covenant, the Ten Commandments that came down. Okay, we know these are the commandments because in Revelation twelve seventeen, they kept the commandments of God. Okay, that's the others of her seed. All right, so we have this uh, week, but prior to this week, we had something else, and that is Pentecost. Okay, so as well in Revelation twelve fourteen, rejoice you heavens and those tabernacling in them. So what we're getting at, guys, is clearly in this time, people are tabernacling in heaven. That's what you can see. They will return and build the street of New Jerusalem. They will rejoice, you heavens. They are tabernacling in heaven. This is why the people are totally blind and ignorant of the prophecy, because it's not happening to them. But it is happening to some. Okay? So... You can see before, we also have eclipses. So at the peace deal, we had an eclipse uh, just prior to that in January 11th. And then once we have these counting the weeks, we continue to see uh, eclipses. So in the middle of the week, okay, rest, which in the Hebrew is Shabbat, okay, similar to uh, Shabbat Shalom, the rest of a week okay but it's a middle week rest and that is pentecost because you count seven weeks from passover so you, you come to passover and then you count seven weeks to get to the feast of weeks okay which is also called counting the omer 50 days Pente means 50 all right so then we arrive at the middle week okay and it's a week of rest now technically this middle week and rest is actually prior to the confirming of the covenant. So we have this week, and then the confirming of the covenant is this week. So this is Pentecost, all right? This is Mount Sinai. This happens first, this happens the next week, all right? So we're continuing our process of weeks, seeing these weeks precisely in Daniel 9. Now we're in verse 27, guys. And keep in mind, the rest of what we're going to go through is predominantly what we're looking at is just that verse. We read it to you earlier, but he will confirm the covenant with many one week in the middle week, rest. Okay, that's Pentecost. Then, after Pentecost, actually Pentecost, what we had is we had a blood moon. We had a blood moon on May 25th, okay? And then it says, sacrifice and oblation. Okay, and the sacrifice oblation means the daily sacrifice was taken. Then we had a solar eclipse, on June 10th, and this is what marked our Zedekiah figure being taken out, Benjamin Netanyahu taken out, okay? And we also had the confirming of this date, the ninth day of the fourth month in Jeremiah, okay? All of this confirming the sacrifices ceased, Zedekiah is captured, okay? All of this happened after Pentecost on the ninth day of the fourth month, okay? So remember before, what we did is we had to count the weeks, from confirm the covenant, then we counted the weeks after that completion, okay, and then we come to this period here. And what we see in Daniel 9.27 is talks about the sacrifice and offering or oblation. And that means it ceased, okay? Now, this is amazing in that we're given this uh, other insight here. When you look at the original language, then it says, and for the wing, Again, as we mentioned in Hebrew, that is kanap. Kanap in the Hebrew, okay? And wing is the word for the eagle's wings. So we refer back to Revelation. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, okay? So the woman is given two wings of a great eagle, and that would be within the sequence of weeks, guys. Can you see that? Okay, we had confirmed the covenant. We had the middle week. Okay, we had the sacrifice and oblation. This is a counting of weeks in Daniel. And within that, we have this expression, and for the wing. Okay? Now, the wing here 
is referring to what we mentioned before. Daniel 7, 4, the, the, the wing is taken from the lion and is given to the saints of the Most High. Okay, that's what we're explaining on this coin is the Antichrist, okay, is the lion. And then he is, uh, has his dominion taken like Nebuchadnezzar. The two wings of an eagle. Uh, focus. Wait. Okay, so he's the lion, Antichrist lion with two wings of eagle. The eagle's wings are plucked. Okay, when they are plucked, those wings are given to the woman. Okay, the two wings of a great eagle. And that's when the dominion of the whole heaven is given to the saints of the Most High. It's not at the end of the apocalypse going into the millennium. This happens during the apocalypse, okay? That's what you can clearly see from these prophecies. That's why we do teaching, because the people are totally ignorant of these things. If they were knowledgeable, if they were the saints, they would be extremely excited. So, also in Daniel 12:11. From the daily sacrifice taken unto the abomination of desolation shall be set up, shall be 1,290 days. Okay? Now, previously, the da daily sacrifice had already been taken previously. All right? But then we would have a counting of those 1,290 days leading to the abomination that makes desolate. Okay? So, again, we, had, we have Pentecost, we have confirmed the covenant. We have the ninth day of the fourth month, sacrifice is taken, okay? And then we have the woman given two wings of an eagle, which happened on the ninth of Av. Okay, the time period here, the ninth of Av, all right, is when the woman was given two wings of an eagle this year, the fifth month, okay? Then, what it says is the abominations to make desolate, okay? And for the wing, abominations that make desolate. So this is talking about the abomination of desolation, okay? And so this is from, you can see, from the wing on the ninth of Av per Matthew 23, 37. Christ said, um, you did not know the hour of your visitation. He would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks. Okay, so that's the eagle's wing, he would have gathered, but you didn't, you didn't know, you didn't see it, you didn't perceive. And he said, your house is left to you desolate. So that's a ninth of Av. So that's confirmation that the two wings of an eagle, what Christ is saying in Matthew 23, is on the ninth of Av. Okay? So we get the abomination of desolate that comes up after this. Okay? So this would be the conclusion of our 1,290 days. Okay? The abomination which, of desolation, which is 1,290 days after. After the daily sacrifice. All right, so let's get that all on the screen. The abomination of desolation, which is 1,290 days after the daily sacrifice, which was taken, which was April 30th, 2018. Okay, and this would lead us to what we believe is the abomination that makes desolate or to give the sanctuary. Now, the date that, that uh, we find in Scripture is... This is the time of Zechariah 7.1. In the fourth year of Darius, so that's this year, the fourth year of Darius, the word of Yahweh came to Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month. Okay, so this is the window of time that we're watching. Okay, onto the last week of the eighth month, going into the fourth day of the ninth month of the abomination that makes desolate. Now, we can also see this in Zechariah 7. They ask, should we keep the fast of the fifth month and the seventh month? Okay. Now, the fast of the fifth, fifth month was the ninth of Av. So, that's when the woman was given two wings of an eagle. All right. And these are the fasts in Jeremiah, as we explained before. There's a fast given from the time of the ninth of Av. The fifth month, you get Yom Kippur, which is the seventh month. And they were given, okay, the time to watch for the abomination that makes desolate, which would then be the uh, time period mentioned in Zechariah 7, 1. Fourth day of the ninth month, or also November 10th is the 27th day of the eighth month. So what you can see as we conclude, once again, is that when we look at the weeks of Daniel, we begin to come to a schedule of sorts, Okay. So we have confirming the covenant. We have Pentecost. This is in the third month, right? 
Then we have sacrifice and oblation. That's the ninth day of the fourth month when historically daily sacrifice is taken. Okay. Then we come to the wings for the wing. The woman is given two wings of the eagle in the fifth month. Okay. Then we come to abominations that make desolate. Okay. An abomination of desolate. And then we come from there, abomination of desolation in the eighth month up into the fourth day of the ninth month, okay? So that's what we're watching for, guys. What does the abomination that makes desolate, what does it mean? We have another video on that, okay? Um, you might say, well, it has to be the third temple is standing. Well, it's also the transgression of abomination to give the sanctuary. So we're also watching for something to give the sanctuary, so that concludes it, guys. I will make the notes available to you, okay? The notes will um, be in the blog post where you can get these notes. Uh, you can see the Exodus, the eagle's wings. We will have other messages as well. And um, we appreciate you guys watching and be patient as we, uh, you know, work through all these different, you know, things on YouTube. We have to leave the B system, Okay, so be patient. If you follow the blog and, you, and the posts on YouTube in the community tab, you'll see that we are posting regularly. If you, don't, if you don't get a notification, just go there and look. We are posting regularly several times a week, but predominantly every Tuesday and Friday. So guys, fear God. Give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the fountains of waters. Amen.